Following the American Revolutionary War, the United States faced potential military conflict on the high seas as well as on the western frontier. The United States was a minor military power during this time, having only a modest army, marine corps, and navy. A traditional distrust of standing armies, combined with faith in the abilities of local militia, precluded the development of well-trained units and a professional officer corps. Jeffersonian leaders preferred a small army and navy, fearing that a large military establishment would involve the United States in excessive foreign wars, and potentially allow a domestic tyrant to seize power 12. Stephen Decker to boarding the Tripolitan gunboat, the 3rd of August 1804. The first Barbary War Stephen Decker to boarding the Tripolitan gunboat, the 3rd of August 1804, the first Barbary War in the Treaty of Paris after the Revolution, the British had ceded the lands between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi River to the United States. Without consulting the Shawnee, Cherokee, Choctaw and other smaller tribes who lived there, because many of the tribes had fought as allies of the British, the United States compelled tribal leaders to sign away lands in post-war treaties, and began dividing these lands for settlement. This provoked a war in the Northwest Territory in which the U.S. forces performed poorly. The Battle of the Wabash in 1791 was the most severe defeat ever suffered by the United States at the hands of American Indians. President Washington dispatched a newly trained army to the region, led by General Anthony Wayne, which decisively defeated the Indian Confederacy at the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794-13. When revolutionary France declared war on Great Britain in 1793, the United States sought to remain neutral, but the Jay Treaty, which was favorable to Great Britain, angered the French government which viewed it as a violation of the 1778 Treaty of Alliance. French privateers began to seize U.S. vessels, which led to an undeclared quasi war between the two nations. Fought at sea from 1798 to 1800, the United States won a string of victories in the Caribbean. George Washington was called out of retirement to head a provisional army in case of invasion by France but President John Adams managed to negotiate a truce, in which France agreed to terminate the prior alliance and cease its attacks. 